Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the basic guide to quick controls in Cubase. And I should be a little bit more specific than that because today we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about track quick controls. There's a second kind of Cubase uh, quick control called the VST quick control. I really don't like them. I'm going to briefly introduce you to them during the course of this video, but we're going to spend the vast majority of our time talking about track quick controls because they're awesome. Hope you enjoy this one today. And if you do check out the Patreon and channel member links below, awesome way to help support my channel so that I can carry on making these videos. Okay, so what's the deal with track quick controls? Why are they so good? Well, they provide a very intuitive and user-friendly interface between your physical hardware. I'm going to be using my Native Instruments Complete Keyboard today, Cubase, and the plugin that lives inside Cubase. Those three entities are all gonna be tied together in a very powerful way. Quick Controls is by far the best way to connect your hardware into a, a specific plugin inside Cubase. Let's see them in operation. I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration and then we'll come back and have a look at really what's going on. I'm gonna use this Moog modular for the majority of uh, the demonstrations today. And I want to automate two controls uh, inside this filter, the frequency and resonance controls are going to be mapped into my track quick controls such that I can move controllers on my hardware and see these knobs up, um, update in real time. Just before we get underway, I'll press play and we can hear what each of these controls is going to do when I start editing them. Here's the frequency. And here's the resonance. Okay, so I want to create some automation using my hardware that I'm going to be able to see from lots of different perspectives using quick controls. In the inspector on the left hand side, you want to make sure that your quick control section is open. It's almost certainly going to have some stuff pre-populated. We're not interested in pre-populated stuff today. We want to do it all by hand. So I'm going to delete these assignments. There's a little button that says remove all QC assignments. And that's that done. The next thing that I'm going to do is put the quick controls editor in learn mode. Press that little learn button. And now it's ready to meet for me to move a control on the plugin. I'm just going to move the frequency knob. And there you see cut off filter one appear. It briefly tells you the current value of that control and then it defaults back to the label. Now I want to assign resonance to slot number two of eight. If I move the resonance control at the moment, it's going to be assigned to slot number one because that's still active. And that's not what I want to do. I want filter, I want the filter frequency on slot number one. So I'll put it back. What I need to do is click this empty box, slot number two, get that red rectangle highlighting, telling you that that's the current um, new destination. And now I can move the resonance knob. Once you've made your assignments, make sure you come out of learn mode so that you don't inadvertently move a different controller and overwrite your intended destination. I want this to be resonance and that's good. And now I can turn off learn mode. So I've just made a mapping between the plugin and Cubase. Remember I said, this is a three-way conversation, hardware to Cubase to plugin. Well, I've done two of those three things so far. Now for the tricky bit, how do I make my keyboard talk to Cubase? If I want these three devices, hardware, Cubase and plugin all to talk to each other, the missing link is getting the keyboard to talk to Cubase. And we accomplish that with a feature called MIDI Remote. Now, this is a little bit beyond the subject of today, but we do need to refer to it briefly because this is how I actually configure quick controls. This is my, um, my surface. They're called surfaces in the MIDI Remote world. Basically a definition of controls that I've mapped from my hardware directly into functions, specific functions inside Cubase. So if we have a look at this thing, you can see that I have eight physical controls, physical knobs on the keyboard, and I've assigned them to quick control slots, one to eight. I'm actually going to delete one of these today so that I can rebuild it and show you briefly how the MIDI remote um, editor works. So I'm just going to delete slot number three from my, uh, from my interface, and I'm going to add it back in now. Cubase is waiting for me to physically move um, a control on my device, so if I move Knob number three, that's it. It's been done automatically. 
So that control has just been assigned simply by, by me moving that physical controller. Cubase has made a mapping to this knob because that's the currently selected item. And it was added to where the red focus square was. I'm going through this very quickly because like I say, this is a bit beyond today's conversation. What I then need to do is to map that physical control into a Cubase function. In my functions browser, I look for quick controls and I'm looking for a selected track, quick control number three, that is gonna be mapped to that, do that. And now if I reorder these, cause they've been sent out of whack, there's QC3 recreated from scratch. And we head back to the surface and there you can see my eight quick controls. So that's how we map the physical hardware into any function in Cubase, the, um, the mapping assistant, allows you to configure these surfaces. You can create any number of controls, buttons or knobs or whatever happens to be in your physical device. And then this enormous pick list of options to choose from where you map hardware into function. Very straightforward stuff. I'd like to keep things really simple. So quick controls are actually the only direct mapping I have. All of the rest of the controls on this keyboard just use MIDI con continuous controller data really, really straightforward. So now that I've established that physical connection between my hardware and Cubase, shut that down so that it's not confusing. If I move knob number one on the, on the keyboard, you see the filter value, the quick control filter value going up and down. If I open the plugin, you'll see that control in the interface moving as well. As I move that knob backwards and forwards, there's the frequency, the filter frequency being updated in real time. So that's mission accomplished. Hardware to Cubase to plugin. Those three things are all talking the same language. And from this point onwards, that communication is completely seamless. It works in every direction. So if I enable write automation, for instance, on this track and get it running. That's me editing filter data in real time. Switch to resonance, just move over to controller number two. As the automation was being written into Cubase over here, you will have seen the quick control values. I wasn't actually looking at them, but you can basically see these values going up and down. Everything is completely interlinked. These three devices are all now talking the same language. From this point onwards, Cubase understands that these two automation lanes are tied to quick control channels. If I select the automation on the filter, for instance, you watch the cutoff value in the quick controls. It's currently set to what, 0.2 something. If I start picking this automation up and moving it, you can see the track quick control is editing, is updating in real time. So Cubase knows that that link exists because they're both automation channels. All of this is dealing with the automation engine. And so Cubase completely understands what that connection is and is dynamically able to update all of these values from any context, from any perspective. You don't get that with MIDI CC. MIDI CC is a much more archaic communication channel. That's just CC data. That's just MIDI values passing either one way or another. It's not even a two-way conversation. You need to open two separate MIDI ports to have a two-way conversation using MIDI CC, and it's very complicated and difficult. You don't have any of that issue with automation. And the thing that Quick Controls brings to the party is the hardware integration. That's really what it's all about. Now let's bring a second plugin into the conversation. I'm going to introduce this plugin over here. It's actually called, annoyingly, it's called Moog Mod Classic. I'm going to change it for today's purposes to Omnisphere to make it a little bit clearer about what's going on. If I could learn to spell. And let's have a look at this. Now by default, Omnisphere doesn't engage automation in the same way that the Moog Modular does straight out of the box. Omnisphere has many more controls than the Moog Modular, so you need to indi individually activate them. In fact, for this particular case, the filter cutoff already is enabled for automation. If you right click on the control, you can see that it has a host automation ID. But if I want to assign a different control instead, let's say the filter envelope, 
that isn't currently enabled. So in the case of Omnisphere specifically, I need to enable host automation. If I try to assign a quick control to Omnisphere without doing that job, let's move this envelope knob, Cubase is not listening. It's not activated that automation lane. When I right click and say enable host automation, it immediately intrinsically understands because it was already in learn mode. The moment I activated that control for host automation, you saw it just jump into the, into the box. Now I can turn off learn mode and that control's been assigned. For the purpose of the next demonstration that I'm gonna do, I actually want it to be filter cut off. So I just move that control and it overwrites it. And now it's doing the job I want it to. I turn off learn. The reason I've introduced this second plugin is to have a chat about VST quick controls. Now I said at the beginning of this video, I don't like VST quick controls. They're too confusing. I like that really clean and simple interface that track quick controls gives you because it's right there in the inspector all of the time. You can see you choose your eight most important parameters that you want to physically control from your device and it works. If you want to automate more than eight controls, track quick controls aren't gonna do the job. You'd need to use VST quick controls instead. I've never written a piece of music where I needed to physically manipulate more than eight controls on any one device at a time. But if you do, and I completely understand that there are plenty of people who do, this is how you wanna do it. VST quick controls are accessed from the little QC control at the top of each plugin. If you press that button, these are VST quick controls and they are specific to each plugin. So you can see now that those two different plugins have got different controls and they've got nothing to do with this track control business. This is a completely different channel. In fact, I don't even have these configured for my hardware. So I can't demonstrate it from the perspective of moving controls on my keyboard. What I can do though, is give you a quick explanation of focus quick controls, because we saw them when we were in the MIDI remote editor earlier. When I was creating that mapping, when I was reassigning um, quick control three, when I typed QC, we saw these things at the top called focus quick controls. These are for use if you're using VST quick controls. I'm gonna briefly overwrite my assignment number one. I'm gonna take it out of track quick control mode and I'm gonna put it in focus quick control mode instead. So if I select the control, click apply mapping, you can see that that's just been overwritten. And so now physical controller number one on my hardware is mapped into VST quick control, not track quick control. I'm gonna reopen the plugin. I'm gonna move this physical control on my device. Can you see that knob in the top left-hand corner? That's your VST quick control and it's doing whatever it happens to be mapped to. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. The thing about focus quick controls is that you can have any number of plugins open simultaneously and whichever one is the currently focused window gets this little blue square. So it's currently Omnisphere. Here's the control. Here's my hardware doing that job. If I select the Moog modular, now that's the focused control. And there's the Moog modulars um, slot number one being updated. I can lock the Moog modular so that that's the only device that receives quick control information. And now, even if I select Omnisphere, you see the little blue box didn't appear. Let's put that over there so we can still see. So I've picked up Omnisphere. This is the that currently selected VST plugin, but the information is still going to the Moog modular because I've locked it in place. The reason I dislike VST quick controls, it's purely historical thing actually. This top line interface was a very recent addition, 12 or 13. In previous versions of Cubase, it was incredibly difficult to get to this stuff. And I basically just stopped using it entirely. I'm probably being a little bit overly prejudiced. It could very well be that Steinberg have dragged the VST quick control functionality back into some sort of usability. I simply don't use it because I don't have the need for this level of complexity. I don't want to have to try to remember which plugin is currently active. And if I move that controller on my hardware, what's it going to do? By keeping my mappings at the track level, let's reassign this QC quickly so that I don't forget to do it. I know exactly where I stand all of the time. I work on a track by track basis. If I've selected running resonance, that's the track that's getting the information. 
there's me moving the controller and I know exactly what's going on. And I can see it there in the track inspector. Having that visibility is really important to me. So that's the difference between focus controls, which are a VST specific thing and track controls, which speak for themselves. One final thing I want to cover today, and that's the enabling of automation at both the track and the quick control level, because they are very subtly different. Now, this isn't something that you need to worry about very often. I'm going to turn off right automation, watch the track control. Okay, so they're mirroring because Cubase understands that there's a link there. They're being mirrored. Now I'm going to re-engage automation, but I'm going to do it from the quick control perspective. So there's a very subtle difference. Right automation has been enabled, enabled for the automation lanes, but it hasn't been enabled at the track level. So now if I get this track running, I'll turn the volume down nice and low. Automation is active. And if I move the quick controls, they're responding. But if I make changes to the pan, that automation is not being picked up because automation isn't active at the track level. Now it is. And there's the pan information being written in. So bear in mind, depending on which one of these two things you enable or disable, you're going to get very slightly different functionality, but it completely makes sense. Track quick controls live inside the track. So if you enable automation from inside there, Cubase does just what's necessary in order to accomplish that goal and leaves the rest of it alone. And with that said, we're done. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Please hit like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.